All right, so today we're going to look at percent problems. Okay, so the kinds of equations that you're going to have to solve today, uh, they're not that bad. Uh, it's just that we have to take what's a word problem, a sentence, and change it to an equation. Okay, so we can use algebra to solve. I'm just explaining what we're going to do. We can use algebra to solve many different situations with percent. Okay, first, to make sure everybody knows the symbol for percent. That's the symbol for percent. It looks like right there. Yep. And percent always means per 100 or hundreds. It's out of 100. So if you get back a test and it says 83%, what that means is out of 100 possible points, you got 83 of them. That's a percent out of 100. Okay. So a percent can be written three different ways. OK, I'm going to show you an example of one written all three ways, and then I'm going to have you guys try them. So first of all, you can write a percent as a percent symbol. Okay, that's how I do it on your test. When I pass it back, I usually put like the number 83 or whatever, and that's a percent. Okay. The next way you can write it is as a fraction. Okay. And what's a percent? It's out of how much? Out of 100. So in your fraction, 100 would be in the denominator. So we'll, we'll look at that. Or you can write it as a decimal. A lot of times when we have to do word problems, we have to change it to a decimal. Can't leave it as a fraction. Well, we could, but then it's hard. And we don't want to leave it as a percent. So we'll change it to a decimal. Why would you do that as a Because you'll get the wrong answer. You've got to change it to a decimal. Okay, let's look at 38%. I'm going to show you three ways to write it, and then i got a couple I want you to try on your own. But, hey, before I even show it, does anybody, anybody tell me how you could do it? First way. So that's the first way, yeah, 38%. 38 over 100. Over 100. So now you've got the percent. You've got the fraction. How about the decimal? Just put a zero and a decimal. Okay, what did we say the fraction was? Thir it was what over 100? Uh, 38 over 100. 38 over 100. The decimal is when you do that out. 38 over 100, 0.38. Okay. So I want you to see all three ways. 38 with a percent sign, 38 over 100, or 0.38. This is the one we're going to have to use when we do word problems, the decimal. They're all equivalent. They all mean 38%. Okay, let's have you guys try one. Let's go back up to that. Yep. So guys, this, if this 38, I, like on a calculator, like if you have one of them old school calculators where it, show, it still shows like the decimal point, it'd be like 38 with the decimal point right here. So every time we wrote a number, we can write it with that, like every number we write, we can write it to, like we talked about um, exponents last week for a little bit. You could write this with the exponent to the first power. But again, we don't because we just assume that. Just like when there's no, um, there's no sign next to the number, we assume that's positive, right? We don't, we just, we don't write it, it's been, that, it's been that way forever. We don't know why, it's just that way. But if I wanted to make this, another way you can think about it is, if I wanted to make this percent a decimal, move that decimal sign twice. All right? I, I think of it like this. If I'm going from percent to decimal, I'm going to move the decimal point two places to the left. If I'm going from decimal to percent, I'm going to take the decimal point and move it two places to the right. All right, it's one way that you guys can think about it. That's how, that's how, I, that's how I keep track in my mind. If you, some of you guys might just know, yep, Mr. Roy, Mr. Hager, I got to move it two dec I got to move it two decimal places. If you're not sure, you might want to keep this in mind. All right, the D2P. Right, so if I'm going percent to decimal, to the left, 
from going decimal 2% to the right. So most of the time, guys, you're going to be doing this. You're going to get it. When you solve, you're going to get it as a decimal, and you'll have to make it percent. So you have to move that decimal point two places to the right. Any question on that? That's good. Because you really you got to know how to change between the two, and that's, that's a good way to remember. Because we don't have a deadline. So we're going to have you guys try it right now. Okay, you got three, three different ones. Let me change this one. Okay, so I have three different percents. I have 12%, 134%, and 5%. I want to write both of those in the two other ways that we can, as a fraction and as a decimal. Okay, let's start with, and remember, where, where's your decimal in the 12%? If it's not written there, where is it? It's at the end. It's at, where's the end, on the left or the right? The right. On the right. Okay. So your decimal point is always on the right side. We normally don't put it, but that's where it is. Okay, so try, try that. See if you can change 12% to a fraction and a decimal, then do 134, and then do 5. How do you do 134 over 100? That makes no sense. Well, just do it exactly the same way you do the other two. Just give it a shot. We'll, we'll go over it. We'll start with the first one. Okay, how do you write 12% as a fraction? Kayla? 12 over 100. 12 over 100. Yes. Okay. How about 134 percent? How would you write that as a fraction? Isaiah? 134 over 100. Yep. 134 over 100. And how about 5 percent? Matt? 5 over 100. Perfect. Okay. Let's, uh, I didn't fill them in. So 12 over 100. Okay. There's your fraction. 134 percent. 134 divided by 100. 5%, 5 over 100. Okay. How about, um, let's do it as a decimal. Okay. Savon, how would you write 12% as a decimal? Um, 12. Yep, how'd you do that? You took the decimal point and did what with that? To the left. Yeah, to the left, how many? Two. Two, just like Mr. White said, two places to the left when you're changing a percent to a decimal. Good. All right, how about 134%? Um, what would that be as a decimal? We do it exactly the same way. It's a little different, but it's the same steps. Yep. What is 134? So it's 134. What are you doing with this decimal? Two places which way? To the left. So what do you get? 1.34, yep. 1.34 is 134%. Okay, and how about 5%? How do we change that to a decimal? Yep. Zero. Zero. No, point 0.05. All right. So when we start to go two places to the left, look what happens. You go one, you're good. What happens when you try to go another one? There's no one. There's, no one. There's nothing there. Yeah, if there's nothing there, when you try to move it, you fill in a zero to hold the place. That's important. Okay, so sometimes, like with 5%, you're going to have to put in a zero. So what did we say it was? Point zero 0.05. Good. So there's the three ways that you can write something as a uh, percent. Percent, fraction, decimal. How would you say that one? This one? The second one like, how would you say the second one? This one? Yeah. 1.34 as a decimal. No, like, how would you say it? Like, well, the first column, you'd pronounce it 134%. No, the THS is a Oh, the fraction? You could say 134 hundredths as a that fraction. One, the decimal. 1.34 is how you say it. That's the only way to say it. I thought it was 1.34. You know, 130. I don't know. 
No, that's it. Just 1.34. Yep. Yes. Yep, one point. We generally just say 1.34 is the decimal. When you're, when you're pronouncing it as hundredths, that's usually with the fraction. 134 well, hundredths. Like there might be other ways you could try to say it, but that's, that's the simplest way. All right, there's three basic kinds of percent problems that you guys are going to do. Okay, here's the first one. Okay, we're going to try three of these. We'll go through the first one together. This is a question about a number. It's asking for a number. Okay, we just real quick, guys. We talked about word problems. You're gonna to want to put these words down, okay? If I I see the word is in here, right? In math, what does is translate to? Raise your hand. Somebody tell me. What does is translate to? Sam. Huh? Minus. Is. Equals, right? So is, is, right, is, right, it translate to, translates to equal, right? We did that last week, we talked about word problems, all right? Then I have of, right? What does of translate to? Who can tell me? What does of translate to? Marcus? Times. Times, right? Multiplication. Those are really the only two words you're going to have to translate. That's it. Is and of. All right. Multiplication. And like Mr. Hager says down, he's going to talk about this. All right. When we solve a percent problem, we always want to write the percent as a decimal. That's why we just, said, that's why we just did this. That's why Mr. Hager just went over how to write things as a decimal. Right? That's why we just did that. All right? When it's not like, you know, wasting your time. There is a method. All right? Isn't it is over O percent over That is one way you can do it, Isaiah. And if you know that way, that's one way that you can do it. Um, Mr. Hager is going to show you a little bit, di little bit different way. Because sometimes, I know even from my experience working with kids, sometimes... They put the is and the of in the wrong spot. The only thing Mr. Hager's way is you don't have to set that up. You can, just set, it, you can set it up based on what the sentence says. And the only thing you have to do is just change the percent to a decimal. There's one more step. If, you're, if you have another way and you're comfortable and, and you get the right answer the way you do it, that's fine. As long as you show your work. Okay, this is just a way that I found most of the time works, works pretty good. All right, so we're going to just kind of underline some of the important things. We already got number. That's important. Is, okay, we talked about what that is. 65%, that's important. Of, and 132. We have five things there. Each one of those five things is going to translate to something in our equation. Okay, so we know about is, we know about of. Be careful with the percent. Okay, we've got to write a percent how? As a decimal. Okay, so we're going to translate the equation step by step. First thing is number. Okay. What number? Okay. We don't know the number, so how could we represent number? What would be a good way to represent it? N. Okay. In general, when you're finding a number, use N. If they ask you for a percent, use P. Okay. Use the letter that makes sense. So N stands for number. So N. Okay. I'll write this nicely in an equation in a second. What about is? Is is equals. 65%. Okay. Only thing we need to do with that is make it a decimal. What is it? 0.65. Now what about of? What does that mean? Time. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put parentheses, because if I use another dot here, it's going to get confusing with my decimal. There are going to be a lot of dots. So just put parentheses. And then 132 is just going to be 132. That's not going to change. So let's write this down. N equals okay, 0.65 
times 132. And that's it. That's our equation we have to solve, and we can use a calculator. <coughs> so what number is 65% of 132? And guys, because it's just it's asking for what number, it's only gonna, for this one, it's only going to be one step. All right? Because n is already by itself. If n had a, for some reason, had a number with it, what would you have to do? Like, say if it was like, whatever, 3n, what would you have to do? Divide. You have to divide, right? But this one ends by itself. When you multiply those two things together on your calculator, you are done. One step. Plug your stuff in, and then do your one step, and you're done. Don't you have to then multiply the 100? No, because we're, we're finding a number. So we're moving into a decimal, Isaiah. That's why you don't have to do that. So that's it. That's the number is 85.8. And how did I get that? I just typed it in. 0. 0.65 times 132. So that's the deepest two inch? That's the number. Because this question said what oh, number. Okay, you solved okay. So now if we go back and read it, what number is 65% of 132? 85.8 is 65% of 132. You guys make sure you're writing that because again, we've been asking for the answers on the test, right? For the examples. So make sure you write that answer down. 85.5 and circle it. I see some people that don't even have a notebook out. That's not a good thing. You want to be taking I mean if you don't write anything else down, you at least want to be writing down the examples. Yeah, another way to think about this is if you had a test, a really long test, that was 132 questions long. Okay, so it was like multiple choice. If it was 132 questions and you got right 85.8 or 80, roughly 86 of them, your score on the test would be a 65. Okay? All right, try um, okay. this one I want you to, you to tell me what to do. And then I'm going to have you try one on your own. Wait, are we figuring it out the decimal? You're, you're going to find what number, you're finding a number, is 76% of 205. So tell me, tell me what to do. First thing, yep? number is N. Yep, number gets represented as N. Good. Okay, someone else, tell me what else what do we do next. Isaiah? Um, put 76% seven, seven, as a decimal. Okay, so we're going to write 76% as a decimal. Don't forget the equal sign after that. Okay, yep, we're going to do that too, is is equals. And go ahead, what's 76% as a decimal? 0 0.76. 0 0.76. All right, what about, uh, what do we do next? Victoria? What's the next, what's the next thing in that sentence that's important? Of, what's of mean? Good. Multiply. So the way I'm going to do that is I'll just put parentheses. And in this case, it's of, of what? Of 205. So I mean, that's pretty much your equation. You could just type it in just like that. 0. 0.76 times 205, and you're done. That's it. What's the answer? So type it in. 0. 0.76. Type it in just like that. Times 205. So the answer is 155.8. Done. Yep, done. And that's a number. Okay. Notice the question's not asking about a percent. It's asking for a number. Very good. Okay. Any questions on that type? That's one type. Finding a number. Okay, that's the easiest type. Okay. But the other types aren't that bad either. Okay, this one. It says 3 is what percent of 8? Okay, so we'll try this one together, and then I want, I want you guys to try the next one. 3 is what percent of 8? What's the first thing in that sentence that's going to be important? Yep, save up. The is. Okay, is is actually the second thing that's important, but what does is mean? Equals. Equals. Yeah, any time you have a number, the number is always important. Okay. So we have three equals. Now, this time they're asking for a percent. 
Okay, n would be good if they're asking for a number, but we want to remember it's a percent. So what could we use? Yeah, p. That would help us remember. p? What about of? Equal, oh, no, of is multiply. Of is multiply. And then of what? Of what number? Eight. Okay, so let's write that down. Three is what percent of eight? Now, Mr. Roy mentioned this a minute ago. You got a number multiplied by p. What do we have to do to get p by itself? Divide by what? Eight. Yeah. Well, how do you know to divide? Yeah, there's a multiplication sign. And division is the inverse. Okay, so now we get p, we get three eighths. But what was this problem asking for? A percent. Do we? Do you see a percent symbol on three eighths right now? No. no. First, let's make it a decimal. Just use your calculator. Three divided by eight is 0.375. The answer I really want is going to be right there. I want a percent. I want something that has a percent symbol on it. So what is 0.375? That's a decimal. We need to make it a percent. Save on? 37.5. 37.5. Perfect, 37.5%. Exactly. Okay? So whenever you're finding a percent, this is like that extra step where you've got to convert to a percent at the end. Okay? And the way you can remember that is use P as your variable, and you'll hopefully remember P is percent, not number. All right. try, um, try that one on your own. 4 is what percent of 5? Okay, so give that a shot. Four is what percent of five? Okay, first, can somebody just tell me what is my equation? Just tell me that, and then we'll solve it. Okay, save on. Four equals p times five. Perfect. Okay, four equals p times five. Okay. How do we solve for p? How do we solve for p. But Brian, how do, we, how do we get P by itself? Divide by five. Good. Divide by five. Divide by five. So we get four fifths. Okay. Is that, does that have a percent sign on it? No. No? So first thing we should do is take four and divide by five. 0 0.8. How do we change it to a percent? What do we have to do? 2a, 2 to the Left. Right. to the right. Okay, so we go 2 to the right. My decimal moves over here. So it's 80%. 80%. Good. Okay, so 80%. How many people got 80%? Okay, good. I got one. You got it. Good. All right, so that's one type. You're finding a number. Second type, you're finding a percent. Third type. Okay, 72 is 150% of what number? Can you help us go over this one? Yep, okay. let's go over it. So again, the technique is the same. Translate each word or number step by step. Okay. What's the first thing in that sentence that's important? 72. 72. Okay. You're just going to write it as 72. What's the next thing that's important? Is. Is. What's that mean? Equal. Equals. 150%. That's important. But what did we say about a percent in a word problem? We've got to change it to a decimal. decimal. What's 150% as a decimal? 1.50. Okay, so your decimal would be right there. It's going to go 2 to the left. One, you can write 1.50 or 1.5. Same, same thing. Okay, next important word is of. of. What does of mean? Multiplying. And what are we multiplying by? Of? 
number. We don't know what the number is. Are we finding a percent this time? No. No. We're finding a number. Okay, so let me rewrite it. 72 equals 1.5n. One step to solve it. Yep, divide by what? 1.5. And 1.5. That cancels out. Now we just do that out. Okay, 72 divided by 1.5. 48. Is that a percent? No. no. It's a number. We're finding a number. Always remember what you were finding. You can, if you have a different technique, that's okay. But that's, that's the way I'm going to explain it for that one. So 72 is 150% of what number? 72 is 150% of 48. Now we got the answer. Okay, and that's the third type. Okay, any questions on the third type? Those are the three types. Yeah, say what? No, okay. All right. Uh, how do you get 1.5? How we get 1.5? So we had 150 percent. You move the decimal two places to the left. So it was here. No, I'm just talking about it was 1.52. Oh. oh. That's that's how you get the 1.5. I thought it was 1.52 then. Yeah, but when um, you move two sides, yeah, two, two sides. Two places to the left. Two yep. To the left. Why didn't you do that? I did. I moved it two places to the left. Why? Why? That's, the, that's just how you do it. You move the decimal two places to the left. You have to, yep. Anytime you want to change a percent to a decimal, two places to the left. I know you have to change two places to the left. You want to change to a decimal. Yeah. Anytime that you're working with a percent in a word problem. Wait a minute. What's the problem? I didn't even get the problem. <laughs> Anytime you have to work with a percent in a word problem, you have to write it as a decimal. Okay, that's, that's important. So it was a percent? I thought it was just a number. Oh, it was a percent. So 72 is 150% of what number? That's why we used N for number. Okay, so those are, those are the three, three different types. Okay. Next thing we can do with a percent is to calculate increase and decrease, right? So this is helpful if, um, you know, let's say you were making money and you got a 10% raise, okay? You could figure out what does that mean? How much more money am I going to make? Or it could be a 10% decrease, okay? If something was, say, on sale and it was 10% off, what does that mean? What's the how much would it cost me if it's 10% decreased? Okay. So here's your formula for percent increase. Okay, so copy, copy this down. Guys, another way you can think of it is like this too. Guys, so as long as you know what your bigger number is in the small, don't put the don't put what I'm trying to get at, guys, is don't put the smaller number first. You don't want to deal with any negative percents. So whatever the bigger number is, whatever the small number is, that's what you go there. Alright? So for percent increase, first thing you gotta find out, let's say something was ten dollars, now it costs twelve dollars. First you gotta figure out what's the amount of the increase there. From ten dollars to twelve dollars, in that case it's two. It's a two dollar increase. Once you know your amount of increase, you divide that by the original price of the item. So if something went from ten dollars to twelve dollars, originally it cost ten. So that's the original amount, ten. Once you divide what's in the parentheses, you multiply it by one hundred. Multiplying it by one hundred changes it to a percent. And decrease is almost the exact same formula. 
Almost the same thing, except instead of the amount of increase, it's how much did it decrease by. So let's say there was something in a store that cost $20, and this week it's on sale, it cost $16. That's a $4 decrease. That's the amount of decrease. The original price of the item, it was $20. Okay? And if you divide that and multiply by 100, you get your percent decrease. So that's for that top one, right? For the percent increase, you need to divide it, right? So it be a bigger number minus a smaller number, right? Then what would you divide by? If it's an increase, would you divide by the smaller number or the bigger number? If it's an increase, uh, the bigger number, right? So if you want to put all your notes, big for the original amount, for a percent increase, it's going to be the bigger number. For a percent decrease, it's going to be the smaller number. But that we don't make any, that we won't make any, um... Well, for a percent increase, the original amount is the cheaper price. Cheaper price. So, yeah, when you're, when you're dividing that out, the original amount is the price before it went up. So the bigger number is the amount of increase on the percent... Let me show you. I, I would just think of it, so you don't get confused, as what was the price before it changed? Yeah. What was it before it changed? So here's an example. Susan's salary went from seven to nine. What was it before it changed? It went from seven up to nine. It started at seven. That's the original amount. It's the, so it's the smaller one when you're doing a percent increase. All right, so now let's, let's actually find what the increase is. So her salary went from $7 to nine dollars. Okay, so what's what's the amount of increase? Two dollars. Went up to two bucks. Okay, so the percent increase is two. How do we get guys, how do we get two? Because seven plus two equals nine. Again, the bigger number was nine, right? Minus the small number two, right? So seven, I'm sorry. So nine minus seven. That's what we got the two from. We just did nine minus seven. Then, like Mr. Hager said, take the original amount, the amount, the amount before it changed. Yep. So it went up. The amount of increase is two. The original amount is seven. What do we multiply that by? One hundred. Okay. Let's do it out. Two divided by seven oh. times one hundred. Mm. It's twenty-eight. Let's round it to twenty-eight point six. So that's the percent increase on her salary. It went up 28.6%. Guys, how, how did Mr. Hager know, I know it's kind of small in that calculator, but how did he know how to round that up? Exactly, right? Well, around, around the nearest decimal place, right? The decimal place. So the first number after the decimal point we look at, then we look at the number after that. That number has to be what to round it up? Anybody know? Five. five or above, right? If it's four or below, keep that first number after the decimal sign the same. If it's five or above, change that number to the next one. So in this case, it was twenty-eight point six. And that's the percent percent increase. Okay. Let's try a uh, decrease. Okay. So in this one, it says David's pay went from. 14 an hour to 12 an hour. So two things you have to find. One, how much is the decrease? $2. Okay. So let's write it down. Percent decrease. Okay. The amount of decrease was, somebody just said it. Two. two. Divided by what's the original amount? What was his pay at? It was at 14. And then what do we do? Two divided by 14, but there's one more step. Good. And that's it. That's all you have to do to find a percent decrease. 14.3. It was it 14.3? Yeah. So two divided by 14. Good. You round. Looks like you uh, rounded perfect. 14.3 percent, and that's a decrease. Okay. Any question on finding a percent increase or a percent decrease? And we're going to finish up with our last thing right now. You guys, make sure you're doing that. You're doing your percent increase. You
can use you can use the same formula, right? The bigger number minus the small number divided by original amount. Then you're gonna multiply that, right? You're gonna divide the top, divide by the bottom, and multiply by 100. All right. So last last application we're going to uh, take a look at has to do with banking. So a lot of times banks they use interest. Okay. If you keep your money in a savings account, you make interest. If you borrow money from the bank, you pay them interest. Okay. Interest is used a lot in banks, and it's represented usually as a percent rate, like an interest rate. Okay. So here's a formula for what we call simple interest. I'm going to make it bigger. I equals P R T. Okay. This is the formula for calculating simple interest. Okay. What do you think I stands for? Interest. Yeah, I is interest. Okay, P you might not not know, but P is basically it's called principal. It's gonna be money. And it's the amount of money that let's say you have five hundred dollars in your bank account. That's your principal. It's how much money you have. Right, R is the rate. Usually it's a decimal. So like, let's say you had money in a savings account and you're making a 2% interest, 2% is the rate. But remember, you gotta make it a decimal. Exactly, rates always have to be a decimal. And then T is our time. So you just add an extra time, you just put it in parentheses, it's usually in years. Yeah, usually they're gonna give you an interest rate that's years. years. So your time is also uh -huh. in years. Yeah. Unless they divided the rate by 12. Yeah, I don't use any like that. We won't give anything like that. No. So, guys, the biggest thing with these is making sure you change the rate to a decimal. That's the most important thing. Okay, so here's, here's a problem. It says, John invested $1,000. We're going to identify what each one of these are. $1,000 at an interest rate of 6% for three years. How much interest is he going to make? So what, guys, on those four letters up there, what is going to be our, what letter is going to be in the problem? Can tell me by raising their hand? What's up, Simon? I. I, right? Because how much interest is earned, right? It's telling us I, right? Go back up. Now, P, right? P is my principal, my amount invested. Justin, what's my P going to be? No, I mean this one is this one it's principal. How much money I'm putting in? How much money is Mr. Hager putting in? Thousand. Thousand bucks, right? Good. Okay, good. We're back up now. Now we're on rate, right? The most important thing with rate is we gotta change it to a decimal. Joseph, yeah. what is my what's my you don't have to change it to a decimal yet, but can you tell me what my rate is? Six percent. Now take that next step and change that six percent to a decimal. Six. Point zero six. Good. So we got point zero six. That is my rate. I already changed it to a decimal, so that's all I'm taking care of. And my last thing is going to be my time in years. Um, Elijah, what's my What's my time? Okay. Huh? Three years. Three, perfect. Done. That's it. Now you just multiply it out. So you get a thousand dollars. Guys, this one's a simple one. It's asking for interest. It's only just multiply everything. Sometimes you might have to divide. What should be my label on that? One hundred eighty what? Dollars. Dollars. Interest is money. It's yes. money you make. One hundred eighty dollars. Okay, so as Mr. Roy said, sometimes you might have to solve for time, but this one was easy. If it's, if it's, asking, for, um, if it's asking for the principal or anything like that, that's yeah. yeah. All right, so for tonight, okay, on page 152, 1 to 21 odd, 25 to 33 odd, and that's it.